Welcome everyone to another episode of Swoonworthy, the podcast. My sister Kayla and I love to talk about movies set in different time periods. And today we are very excited to go back in time further than ever to the 13th century BC, the epic story of the legendary Trojan War. Yes, you've guessed it. We are focusing on the movie from 2004, Troy. Now, Kayla, you've been excited about this one for a while. You really pushed us to do this movie. I was a bit hesitant, but I have to say after rewatching the movie a couple nights ago, I'm so ready now. And I'm glad you really encouraged us to do this one. So, but tell me, what were your reasons for wanting to cover this one? This one's for the girls. <laughs> okay. So you mean the eye candy, the swoon worthy <laughs> actors? Is that what you're thinking? Yes. I mean, we've got Eric Bana, which is just, wow, smoking hot. Yeah. And then we've got Orlando Bloom who, and this, this is definitely not the movie if you're wanting to swoon over Orlando Bloom, but he's still pretty cute to look at. And then you've got Brad Pitt. He trained for six months to get a Greek God worthy body and him and Eric Bana, tr- they trained and practiced and they didn't use a stunt uh, person for that sword fight that you saw. And so like, come on, why wouldn't you want to talk about this movie? It's so swarm worthy. Okay. So I think I understand your reasons now fully. Okay. I also love the three beautiful women in the movie. So I can't wait to talk about them. And yeah, just the whole overall vibes that come from this movie. And Kayla, I did the math. So I was 15. You were 12 when this came out. I don't remember if we saw it in theaters, but this is certainly one that we watched over and over again on our living room projector. Mm-hmm. Right? Oh, we've, we've talked about that in our podcast before. We just had this blank white wall in our living room because we were so dedicated to just watching movies. Like, mom, you can't put any decorations on that wall. Like <laughs> it's for the projector. <laughs> yes. Speaking of home setups, I did just move. So there's a chance the quality of my audio may be a little shakier than past episodes, but I will definitely make sure it's fixed by the next episode. Just a little note there before we really get underway. And I want to bring back, bring us back to this time that movies came out in theaters, May of 2004. So it's definitely a summer blockbuster. And I went to look at how it did in the box office that year thinking it'd be in the top 10, but it was actually ranked number 12. And that's because it was such a crazy year for movies. Okay, so we have number one, Shrek 2. Number two, we have Spider-Man 2. Three, The Passion of Christ, Passion of the Christ. Four, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Five, The Incredibles. National Treasure was number 10. Now that one stars Diane Kruger, who of course plays Helen of Troy in the one we're we're talking about today. Also not in the top 10, but have to mention them because they were so significant in 2004. We have Mean Girls, Anchorman, Dodgeball, White Chicks, The Notebook, Garden State, The Village, Napoleon Dynamite, Princess Diaries 2, A Cinderella Story, and King Arthur. So it was just a crazy year for movies. Yeah. That was an iconic year. I think it was. And this movie but is iconic. It is. And and I'm gl- I'm so glad because I almost thought that I wasn't going to like it when I rewatched it. Really? Yeah. I mean, I loved it back then, but I was thinking there's no way this movie is held up. But I just... I just got into it again. <laughs> so good. Um, so let's get started. Okay. First, just a couple of notes about, you know, the, the making of the movie directed by Wolfgang Peterson. Music composed by James Horner, who did Titanic score. Did you know that? Also Avatar, Braveheart, A Beautiful Mind. And I think the music really plays a big part of it. So we have this, ta- let's see, Tanya Zarowska doing the vocals right at the beginning that 
that highly vocal, uh, I think she's described as like Byzantine vocalist, angelic voice. Um, and then at the very end, we have Josh Groban's voice coming on singing uh, Remember Me. So the music is just very iconic too. I love that. Filmed in Malta, Morocco, and Mexico. And there was a hurricane. There was a hurricane. Yeah. Oh. I think there was actually two hurricanes when they were filming. One was when they wrapped up, right when they were wrapping up the movie and, or after they met, wrapped up the movie. And it was just um, a crazy time. And <laughs> yeah, so let's continue. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Get to the guy. And Okay, hold on, Kalo. <laughs> Aren't you interested in the wide aspect ratio I was going to talk about? Yeah, no, go for it. <laughs> okay, so anamorphic widescreen format. Did you know what that was? Wide, wide, wide screen. ass screen. Twenty three point nine one ratio. I don't know. I just thought when I watched it on my TV earlier or a couple of days ago, I was like, wow, this is like probably when widescreen was just really. Yeah, they wanted it to time. be very cinematic and it's, you know, like a, like a classic epic film, you know? Yes. No, I'm glad you mentioned that because it made me think of old movies where there's the big fight scenes, the chariots, the men, and those uh, like Cleopatra, um, Ben-Hur. It's very classic to do this kind of a style of movie. And then it, but then it also, because there, you've got to admit there's some campiness in this. And it made me think a bit of the Coen brothers making fun of like the making of these styles of movies uh, in Hail Caesar from 2016. I don't know. Do you, did you think there was campiness in the movie or you think it's like, like, what do you think about the acting? The, what do you think? Um, no, I think it's it's very realistic because I know that they didn't want to have any of the whole god to have too much of like the Greek gods and goddesses like featured in the story, even though it, they're supposed to for the story. But um, I think it just adds to the more realistic aspect of the movie. I like I feel like I feel like I'm stepping back in time when I watch it. Stepping back in time, three thousand two hundred years ago with uh with Achilles yeah so do you know about the legend of Achilles tell me okay so Achilles was born uh to a king and a woman who is considered a sea deity an immortal okay Nerid I don't really know exactly if I'm pronouncing that right Thetis. And so she was immortal. She wanted him to be immortal. So she took him to the river Styx and dipped him into the river Styx and held him by his heel. So that's why his heel is his weak point. It wasn't dipped in there. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I knew that. <laughs> you knew that. <laughs> well, Does maybe our everybody knows that. No. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps our listeners don't. We have to be sure. Um, and then the Trojan War that we're going to focus on, that the movie focuses on, they think it's historic, but it could have just been from the legends, the the retelling of Homer's The Iliad. It's kind of up for debate. And they think now that it was in Troy was a city where modern day Turkey is. It's real. It's real. Okay. It happened straight. It happened straight from Kayla's mouth. Let, let you know. Okay. Good to know. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, they really do make you feel back in time. I love like the opening. So Sean Bean, can we talk about Sean Bean also? Uh, he's Odysseus in this and he opens it up saying men are haunted by the vastness of eternity. And so we ask ourselves, will our actions echo across the centuries? Will strangers hear our names long after we are gone? So it's definitely like trying to set the whole like uh, theme of being immortal, remembering your name. Well, what's crazy is we still, everyone still knows who Achilles is and that he was this mm -hmm. amazing warrior. And so he, it, it yeah. worked. <laughs> it worked. It's crazy. It worked. And we still remember Hector 
and Paris and Helen of Troy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay. So let's talk more about the sort of the opening scene when we first see Brad Pitt as Achilles, we see him naked with two women. That's pretty classic. <laughs> classic did you know do you know how old brad pitt was in this movie kayla how what guess how old brad pitt was in this movie he was 41 okay so you you must have looked that up <laughs> no but come on that's pretty crazy <laughs> <laughs> um okay wait i was gonna say that oh yeah you were talking about brad pitt and the naked two naked ladies and that's when that little boy comes in to you know tell him to hurry up and guess who? What movie that little boy was in? The Disney no, Channel. What? The Disney Channel original film, Phantom of the Megaplex. Oh, that was him. The little boy is like Phantom of the Megaplex strikes again. <laughs> <laughs> I love that movie. I actually watched. I love. <laughs> Disney Channel movies are the best. So they are. I, I still watch them. them. I probably need to grow <laughs> up, but I can't. <laughs> well, they made them available on Disney Plus, so like why not you know yeah he's a cute boy and so and and that's he's pretty harsh to the little boy he's like yeah no he's like that's why no one will ever remember you yeah (laughs) well speaking of Brad Pitt seeming a little harsh I also read that he um well he trained for six months to get in the body of this role he also was not even happy about this movie I know he had to be in it because he owed the production company a movie and then also on top of that he's decided to quit smoking during the movie so he was just miserable the whole time but i feel like it's perfect (laughs) and it adds to his whole attitude like it was just it worked out i i think that's but maybe he's on a purpose because he is a no he a um what's it called method a method actor i don't know but i don't know i agree with you about the attitude but i don't know if he did that purposefully i don't know if we can give him that credit but yeah he's just kind of on edge and the only time he's really vulnerable is with but okay hold on wait we're gonna head up ourselves so um i also have to just talk about how i know ne- i always remembered i kind of got confused i think when i was younger like okay there's Menelaus and there's agamemnon and there's all these like older men and i didn't know who they were and then i looked it up this time and I was like oh my gosh Agamemnon is Brian Cox from Succession and then Agamemnon is Brendan Gleeson who is just so popular now even and Brian Cox he wanted to be in this film because he said he always wanted to be in an epic oh that's so cool yeah very cool so like they really got amazing actors for this it's just the perfect cast and then they went and they they needed someone beautiful and ethereal for Helen of Troy because she's she's supposed to be the most beautiful woman ever and they got Diane Kruger who is international awesome beauty actress I just this this was she was a no-name actress at the time and they searched for six months to find the perfect Helen and they originally he originally just didn't even want to have a Helen in the movie at all because he didn't think anybody could live up to it but I feel like she's she she's a great Helen I love her. I think, I think, yeah, she speaks like multiple languages. She's German. Um, I, I read she did the, the German language version herself with her own voice. Like, I just think I love Diane Kruger. So we have Helen of Troy and we have Orlando Bloom and Hector who are supposed to be guests to Menelaus and they, and you can tell there's chemistry between Paris and Helen and then he follows her up the hall and you're kind of thinking okay is this is he being really creepy and stalking her no he's been coming there the past couple nights they've been they've been that is your word canoodling um and you can see why because Orlando Bloom is in his prime (laughs) as Paris but also like he's she's she has a horrible life. She married this old man at a early age. He doesn't love her. And I mean, you can't feel bad for Menelaus. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> but um, 
it's a little sneaky of him to just steal her aboard the ship and not tell his brother. His okay, Eric Bana. I think Eric Bana is so perfect in this movie. No, he's yeah. definitely like my favorite character of the whole movie. He's just beautiful. <sighs> he's so sweet and he's a great husband and father, and he's just so honorable. You it's know, like, honorable, the moral compass, and he always later on whenever they're kind of being superstitious he's kind of just like trying to tell them don't listen to these prophecies like let's just be strategic yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> oh my gosh but um he this is oh, i love him in this movie i forgot how much i loved eric Bain in this movie and then i watched it i was like oh. no he was made for this role and apparently him and brad pitt had like a game when they were training for that fight because they practiced a lot and so they gave each other a hundred dollars for a big hit if they accidentally hit each other and then fifty dollars for like a smaller hit and then i think it was eric bannon who ended up getting like 750 dollars or 500 something dollars from brad pitt because brad pitt he hit him so many times (laughs) (laughs) that's crazy he's just brad pitt's (laughs) just the perfect achilles like he's i can't think of any any other actor and he well, and he like that opening scene where he he's being challenged to fight that other huge man at the beginning. And he just his moves where he he's like a lion and yeah. they call he calls it, you know, they use the phrase lion multiple times where he just kind of pounds his lunges and stabs. It's like, oh, my gosh. Crazy. I know. Yes. yes. But Eric Bana was 35, Brad Pitt 41, Orlando Bloom 26. And Orlando Bloom, this is 2004, so he's already been Lord of the Rings, Pirates of the Caribbean 2003. He had these, like, major movies right now. And in this one, he just doesn't come across as the brightest and the strongest. He's no Will Turner. He's no Legolas in this. Yeah, I mean, he's just, to me, he's more believable as an elf than a, Kayla, than a, than a hero. Kayla, do you know what Legolas syndrome is? What's that? Legolas syndrome is something people came up with when an actor gets cast in a role that suits their appearance more than their real life looks. Oh, I mean, Orlando Bloom is Legolas. Like, yeah, you, yeah, he looks you see really it? good with long blonde straight hair for some reason. <laughs> the, the elven ears, like a bow and arrow. Because once he gets the bow and arrow in this movie, I'm already like liking him more. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, he's so dreamy for some reason. Yeah. Like that. It's a thing. <laughs> Legolas syndrome. I'm sure there we gotta at some point brainstorm and figure out who else falls into that category. But so funny. I mean, he looked really good as the pirate. I think he looks better with longer hair. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The longer the better. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I had to to bring that up because I think that's hilarious. Um, Diane Kruger, so she's around 27. We were talking about how she's no, you know, lesser known, but I think she was in this, this French Christmas movie um that I saw before that. I need to look that up that year. Did you know she's married to Norman Reedus in real life, Daryl from The Walking Dead? Yes. And they were in a movie together. It was actually really good. Oh, I think they're the cutest couple. Yeah. And they steal her away. I love they're wearing this like cobalt blue, like they're both wearing this blue outfit when they're sailing home with, with Helen. And I, I just love that. And the, the necklaces, it's very Greek, very Mediterranean. Their brother and their brothers. Like it reminds me of when parents dress their kids the same. (laughs) (laughs) They just like, we're brothers. We're, we're sailing home together. I don't know. (laughs) So funny. Well, you know, there's like so many pictures of us wearing matching clothes when we were younger. Well, and apparently, because they, they started filming in Morocco, but then the war in Iraq was starting. Yep. They had to go to Baja, California, Sur, Mexico. There you go. But we get some, I mean, the, the visuals are great. The The panoramic landscape scenes. And then I did want to mention the costume designer. So Bob Ringwood got an Oscar nomination for this movie. One of the only, I think it's the only Oscar nomination for this movie was costumes. And Bob Ringwood won for this 
no, I'm sorry, nominated for this one in Empire of the Sun, the little Christian Bale movie. Also did Batman movies. Um, yeah, just had to call out the costumes. I love Helen's costume when she's riding in the chariot, riding into Troy, the classic white Grecian empire waist drapey gown. It's just the perfect Greek goddess look. And then the gold accents and then the gold headdress, the leaves. I love her hair in this movie. It's so pretty. She's so pretty in this. Mm -hmm. I, I do think, so I did watch this with my husband. He was saying, I think nowadays they would have given her a little more time and depth and like yeah. maybe some more clever line. Don't you think nowadays? Yeah. Well, I yeah. just think they should have cast Jennifer Lopez. No. Apparently no, they were considering funny. it. <laughs> uh, I think I also read like Katie Holmes or something. Keira Knightley. But she also, Keira Knightley also auditioned for, um, what's the cousin? Briseis. Briseis. Mm -hmm. But I think. Uh, the casting was spot on, I think. Yeah. And Saffron Burroughs plays um and drama key am i saying that right um <laughs> let me just double check that and drama key yeah so that's oh, the yeah. wife of hector saffron burrows i know you and i have one particular movie we love of saffron burrows do you want to share with the audience um if you hadn't have asked me i would remember the name deep blue sea yes <laughs> i mean the shark movie deep blue sea from 1999 oh she drives me crazy in that movie she's like <laughs> all i care about is curing alzheimer's i don't care about us and they're like okay sorry <laughs> okay but that movie is epic. i love that movie yeah i didn't know her so, name was saffron that's pretty yeah she's beautiful and then she's also in this um circle of friends movie with mini driver i don't know if you ever saw that mm -mm. she might be irish Oh, I can't remember. But yeah, so the cast exceptional, and then Rose Byrne as um, Briseis. So I think this was one of her first roles, and fellow Aussie Eric Bana, I think, tried to get her or gave put in a good word word for her. Yeah, there are some really old pictures of Rose Byrne with Heath Ledger. They're both Australian, and they're like doing like a little photo shoot. It's real cute. Oh, so I don't look it up, <laughs> but she's just, okay. We, we raved about her when we did our Marie Antoinette movie. Cause she just, she's a scene stealer in Marie Antoinette, 2006. We've always loved Rose Byrne. These pictures are really cute. I'm looking at them. <laughs> Aren't they adorable? Oh, I always get sad about Heath Ledger. I know. I think he could have been in this movie. He could have done some. I don't know. Oh, I mean, him as an Achilles? Yeah. I could probably see that. Oh, yeah. I think he could do that. But I still think Brad Pitt was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> He's just very golden <laughs> in this movie. <laughs> it's a golden boy. But, um, okay, so of the three women, who's your favorite? Like, are you team... Helen no, team. I like the cousin. I know. I, I just forget her name. I didn't, I didn't even try remembering any of these names other than <laughs> Hel Helen and Achilles. <laughs> Who were the other ones? Hector. Paris and Hector. And that's it. Agamemnon. I kind of remember that. <laughs> oh my gosh. No, but Brise I am so team Briseis in this movie. Like I remember my favorite parts growing up were just her and Brad Pitt and their chemistry because once Okay, so once the Greeks realize that Helen has been stolen from Sparta, they go and, and oh, and Agamemnon just wanted an excuse to fight, right? He just wanted an excuse. So his brother is like coming to him saying, they stole my wife. And it's like, okay, let's go, let's go fight the Trojans. So they go and there's an initial battle scene on the beach and that's pretty cool. And Brad Pitt just is like, the advance guard, him with his, uh, what are they called? Myr Myrmidons, the tribe that he kind of, he's like the head of the tribe. 
right? And he's like, we are lions. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, so anyways, sorry. Uh, so they go to the beach and and the Trojans know they're coming. Like, they're like, okay, Paris, you stole the, the girl. Like, they're going to come after us. They're going to, but luckily they have a very strong city. So within their walls, they're all protected and stuff. But there's the very big... Um, juxtaposition between Hector's code and Achilles is, you know, what drives Achilles. So we have Hector saying, honor the gods, love your woman and fight for your country. And then you have uh, Achilles saying, we are lions, immortality, take it, it's yours. (laughs) (laughs) So it's very much like, you know, Hector is just so honorable, as you said. And then Achilles is a bit out for himself and ma- for making a name, making a name for himself. Yeah. I thought it was funny. Cause his mom was literally like, I, well, you've got two options. You can stay here. You'll fall in love. You'll have lots of children. They'll love you and adore you and remember your name. But eventually, you know, once, once they have their kids and their kids have kids, yeah, they won't talk about you as much, but you know, you lived your life. She's like, or you could go to Troy and you will be infamous. Like no one will ever for, forget you. I mean, you might, you'll probably die, but at least people <laughs> will remember you for thousands of years. And he's like, I'm going to go with that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think it's funny when they look, I think they pan in on his face a bit. Like he's looking out in the distance. Like, yeah. He's like, is there even a question? Like- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And she says, your glory walks hand in hand with your doom but you will never come home and I will never see you again. So Wait, I don't yeah, know. fine with me. <laughs> fine. But you know, do you know the actress? She looks familiar. She almost looks like Glenn Close. Okay. Yeah. I mean, as iconic as Glenn Co- Close, but yeah, Julie Christie. So probably one of my favorite movies of all time, Dr. Shivago. She's Lara, the main beautiful blonde actress, Julie Christie. And that's from Dr. Shivago is from 1965. And that's a movie by director David Lean. And she's just amazing in it. So the, and then King Priam. So Hector and Paris's father in this, Peter O'Toole, legendary actor, who was also famous for a David Lean directed film, Lawrence of Arabia from 1962. So you have two, you know, I think Peter O'Toole was nominated for eight Oscars and never won one. Uh, Julie Christie is an Oscar winning actress. These two classic film stars as the the older people in the movie. I just, it was such a great choice. Such a great choice. Did you look up pictures of Julie Christie? Because she's beautiful. I did, but I'm still looking at the Rose Byrne Heath Ledger pictures. <laughs> <laughs> They're so cute. They're just like, let's go, let's go take some pictures in Las Vegas and look cute. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I think it was it was for it might have been for a movie called Two Hands. I'm seeing, but it says it was Rose Byrne and Heath Ledger photographed by Rupert Thorpe in Las Vegas, May 1999. <laughs> there's so, the reason, having so much fun reasons unknown <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> whatever they're having fun so cute okay but back to Troy back to okay Troy. right so where were we okay they're they're fighting on the beach and then okay here we go rounding it out to where I started so they steal they capture Rose Byrne's character Perseus put her in the tent with Achilles and is like, here's your little gift here, this this woman. And he instantly knows that she's royal because of the way she's speaking, the way she's acting. And I think that's so cool. So she's not just a slave girl or, you know, they found her as like a priestess, a sort of a religious girl. He can tell she's royal and he's, he's instantly charmed by her. Oh yes. She's very independent minded independently minded and confident yeah 
And I think she's the best female, best written female character in this for sure. Oh yeah. She, she tries to kill him in his sleep at one point and then he totally seduces her and (laughs) (laughs) And then he completely seduces her (laughs) doesn't have a chance no it's just kind of game over but (laughs) i mean you you can (laughs) you can see the chemistry there um and it's finally you're finally seeing a softer side to achilles she questions everything he he usually thinks of and stands for like she, he almost goes, he goes home or he tries to go home after this and not fight the Trojans. He's like, this is, I'm done with fighting and killing yeah. basically. Cause he kind of fell in love with her, but mm-hmm. what happens? She, do you, you want to talk about what happens, how he gets pulled back in? Well, Hector kills his cousin. Yes. So how uh, i mean i forgot about that scene when you think it's achilles running and mm-hmm. and and encouraging all the greeks to to fight for troy in this epic battle scene on the beach where the the trojans put fireballs down the sides of the dunes or whatever but um where was i going with this um but it's not him it's he moves like him he looks like him and then they take off the mask. Hector pulls the mask off or the, the helmet off. Sorry, not mask. Yeah. And it's it's his cousin, Patroclus, played by Garrett Headland. And shout out to Stephanie, our friend who was on the Moulin Rouge podcast with us. She's going to co-host with us again soon. She said she was just in love with Garrett Headland following this movie. And this was his first movie but now he's been in so many things and he's the perfect like younger brad pitt looking man yeah Yeah. love him um but he he's a bit this this happens in all the movies the young one wants to go to war it's like the patriot kayla like the young one wants to go to war and it's like you're gonna get killed (laughs) i don't yeah i mean I just don't get it. But we do get a really cool fight scene when then, wait, hold on. But when he learned, when, when Achilles learns that Patroclus is dead and he's just like, Patroclus. <laughs> what? His, acting, his acting in that part. Okay. And I have to go back and watch. You he's like, find the funniest moment. I'm sorry. It's just, he's like, he comes out of his tent. And he's like, where's Patroclus? Patroclus. And like, I don't know. Aww. It's sad. But at the same time, like his acting, a little... I don't know if his heart was in it, Brad Pitt. Yeah. I mean, I've quit smoking before and you don't really <laughs> care about anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. But anyways, so then he goes and challenges Hector and he shouts his name outside the walls of Troy and Hector kisses his wife and big headed baby goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> no, Kayla, I'm going to send you. No, do you, it, it, do you I remember? remember thinking last night, I was just like, that is a large baby. We used to laugh at that when we were younger <laughs> watching this. Like, like his head is bigger than Saffron Burroughs's head. And, <laughs> and she's adorable. Tall. I'm just saying. She's tall, Mont. She's so beautiful. The kind of baby. Anyways, I love the way you said that. <laughs> <laughs> he kisses his wife and big headed baby goodbye. And then because he knows he's gonna die, Hector. I know he, he's like oh crap well plan b and so that's when he starts showing her the way to the secret escape route mm-hmm. and um it's so sad that you know he was such a good man and it was an accident i know and but later we you know he he gives him he gives achilles a run for his money and later Achilles says Hector was the best fighter I ever fought. Yeah. Um, he, but he, he drags his body back to the camp. I hate he, the fall chariot. I hate the, it's so it makes me so sad. The when he's crying, the the king. But you don't hate him. You hate. No, I hate seeing the sadness. Crying. Oh, you okay? So sad, <laughs> and because he just hates seeing his son, his oldest son. 
And he's stuck with Paris. <laughs> he is. He's a little bummed about that. You know but Kayla. About- <laughs> no, but Peter O'Toole, his speech to Achilles in this movie is number one acting scene in this whole damn movie. I mean, I love Peter O'Toole. He is just oh, phenomenal. Yeah. And was this like his last movie he ever did? He's old. I think it might have been. He died in 2013. Okay. And as I good mentioned way before, to, way to go. Like, that's a great scene. I know, but it still kills me. He was nominated for eight Oscars and he never won. He never won one. He should have won one for that. I know. He should have gotten Best Supporting Actor, like like Christopher Plummer in Beginners, like totally. Well, he was very respected. Yeah. I think all the actors on making this movie were just in awe of being in his presence. Wait, what time <laughs> what time did you say he, what year did you say he died? 2013? Oh, he was in a movie in 2018. <laughs> he came back to life. What? He was in Catherine of Sinai in 2018. <laughs> well, he definitely died in 2013. Well, he must have come back because so they used footage. They must have no, used he must. No, he wasn't. He wasn't in something else in 2015 and 2014. Kayla. What are you saying? I looked. I looked up. He died. Yeah, but he did die in 2013. So what's going on here? <laughs> um, Where is a number. Oh, here we go. A number of his films were released after his retirement and death. Uh, so he did not retire. He died. He retired because he died. <laughs> <laughs> yep. It looks like. Yep. Wow. He maybe made some movies earlier on and then they released them later so that's where you're seeing that discrepancy yeah. and <laughs> Troy was not his last film he was in a lot of other things okay I yeah. mean I just still wish he got an Oscar but oh yeah anyways that scene it just tears at your heartstrings like he's talking to Achilles but he he warms even the cold heart of Achilles and he allows him 12 days of mourning his son. He gets to put the coins on the eyes and do the funeral pyre. And and then he comes out of the tent. And he's like, oh, Briseis, hey, I thought you were dead. <laughs> the cousin, remember? Yeah. She, uh, <laughs> she gets to go home and she's torn about going home. She's like, do I leave Brad Pitt, Achilles, hotness, or do I just stay here? I don't I think she was just realizing, like, she's like, of course she's going to go there, go back. But she was kind of just like, wow, I think I like this guy because I don't want to leave this this tent. Even after he totally Darth Vader's her and, like, chokes her oh, in that I, scene. I know. But, I mean, it's Achilles. Like, what do you expect? <laughs> and he does go after her later. So he does the whole gives them 12 days of peace. Agamemnon's like, oh, I love how Agamemnon, so Brian Cox character, he's like, after um Patroclus dies, mm-hmm. but he like rallies the troops and whatever, he's like, that boy just saved this war for us. <laughs> All he cares about. That's Power. one thing I was wondering. I'm like, this poor little Troy village in this little gated community is so happy and they're so sweet to each other. And they're just like beautiful Grecian yeah. people or the, not Grecian, whatever they are. And they're just so happy and, and just loving life in that gated community. And this king over here just wants to just kill, pillage and destroy all he can. Like, that's all he cares about. Like, dude, you have enough. Just stay over there in Greece and just chill and be happy and let, let mm-hmm. Troy live. He wanted to make a name for himself too, I guess. And he thought the only way to do it was to to just gain other territories. And yeah. Why do people care? Like, I don't care if people remember me. <laughs> like, just. Oh, well, I do. <laughs> but I'm not going to kill for it. You do care? Or start a war. You want people yeah. 100 years from now to be like, oh, Carly, I remember her. She. Yeah. Did that thing. Like that matters to you? That podcast. She did that movie podcast. No. Kayla, 
Let, let's okay, talk let's, about Destiny. And- wait, let's move okay. on. Okay, but um, a couple of other things before we get to the end climactic, you know, scenes. Um, back to when Achilles challenges Hector and Hector's like, okay, let's make a pact that the loser gets the proper funeral rites. And then Brad Pitt's like, or Achilles is like, there are no packs between lions and men. <laughs> <laughs> he just, he really believes he is a lion. Um, <laughs> and that was such a good fight scene. <laughs> it was nominated for an MTV movie award for best fight scene, but it lost. Surprisingly, yeah. it lost to Kill Bill volume two. The fight scene between Daryl Hannah and Uma Thurman with the the snakes and the vipers and the really? that's a, yeah yeah interesting. So I like how the a two women fight scene beat out the two men personally. But well, I think this one should have won. This is glor- <laughs> glorious. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, so I just wanted to mention that, and then oh yeah, and then when Briseis leaves. No, that's at the end. Just kidding. Okay. So yeah. So now it's the time to build the Trojan horse. And it sounds like, it seems like it's Odysseus's um, idea, Sean Bean's character. And they build the horse. The horse looks cool. It could have been really cheesy, but it looks pretty cool. I think. I think they did a really realistic job. And I think it would have been cool if they made a sequel about Odysseus and they used him. They should have that. There are Reddit articles, Reddit posts on they. So I think back then it was like a rumor, maybe even that Sean Bean was going to be in an Odyssey uh, spinoff and then it never happened, but he could still do it. Yeah. It's like, they're afraid. They're afraid of doing the whole Greek goddess gods and stuff like Mm -hmm. that. Instead you have, Oh brother, where art thou? Which is the same uh, thing huh i actually just watched that last oh that's funny i didn't even realize that we watched Wait, you watched that last night i watched oh brother what we're all bleh. i watched oh brother where art thou and then we watched troy no way wait did you did must it you did that on purpose right no <laughs> you're kidding me at the end or whatever or the beginning it was like a homer story or whatever and i was like yeah. oh well that that worked out <laughs> <laughs> wait what this yeah. that's so strange coincidence kayla that's how i live my life man just one strange coincidence at a time <laughs> oh my gosh oh okay i'm still like digesting that but <laughs> <laughs> okay let's just leave it there okay um by the way sometimes kayla you just remind me of phoebe oh really from friends from friends I mean, and like them. and when you in the mansfield park episode our last episode where you said you were going to name your daughter a knock soon a moon uh juvenalia <laughs> i was like that's so phoebe <laughs> oh boy <laughs> am i am i a friend's character kayla um i'm ross aren't i yeah but anyway is that a good note <laughs> I okay. like Ross. Okay, so yeah, I think he's cool. Um, okay, so there's the the fall of Troy. The Trojan horse works. They get in there and they do bad things. Achilles, he jumps out of the horse and he's just like beelining it to Perseus. So he just he's finding her, he's trying to find her. She is she and all the other women are trying to save as many people as they can and get out of the city through the secret exit paris is being a little bit more of a redeeming character he gives the sword yeah i like troy like even after that whole scene where he failed at at the battle and And we just like ignored that part (laughs) crawled away embarrassingly at least he went back and got that damn sword and he like actually cared about the lineage of the trojan people yeah and he gives it to aeneas and the aeneid is also a a Greek story there. Um, and then he, he's he been practicing his bow and arrows, his archery. 
being all channeling Legolas and he ends up so so he uh Achilles finds Briseis but she's already like being badass and like stabs the guy and is like saving herself right but then they get to have their little reunion and he says you gave me peace in a lifetime of war oh but but Paris totally shoots him in the heel and my husband just laughed out loud at that because it's just like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like what did you expect um but then <laughs> It was smart. They still, you know, he gets shot by other arrows. It's not that one that kills him. But I, I think I remember Kayla when we were younger thinking like, because that's the only one that stays in his body when he dies, like people, it's almost like that's why the legend happened. Yeah. I think that's what they're saying. Um, is that what they're saying? Because it, it was definitely more, they're trying to make it more of a realistic image of that story. Um, mm-hmm. so that's an interesting interpretation yeah, because he pulls out the other arrows or the other arrows are pulled out of him or whatnot. But then when he falls, it's a really good position. And it's like the arrows just sticking out of his heel. So like when they find him, it looks like that's what took him down. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then pretty much a lot of people die. Odysseus survives. And it's funny because they say Sean Bean is famous for always dying in movies Sean Bean's characters oh really yeah so Boromir and Lord of the Rings like he always dies in movies Sean Bean but it's just funny because in this one he's like the only um Greek guy to survive it's interesting yeah it's like a thing um and he says if I ever tell my story no if they ever tell my story say I walked with giants I lived in the time of Hector and I lived in the time of Achilles. So it really pulls it back full circle to the opening about remembering and being living on after your death. So yeah, that's it. We did it. That's uh, that's Troy, the movie. Yeah. If you haven't seen it, you need to go watch it. It's very, it's a classic Hollywood blockbuster film. It is. And I swear, I, I was really thinking I would hate it or just find it way too cheesy, campy, but I got pulled in again. And I do like campy things. Like, that's just me. I do like, I do like a good, a good campy show or movie. So I, don't think I guess I shouldn't have been at all. You don't think so at all. Like mm-hmm. the men with their armor and their, their, the armor covering their, um, their shins. I looked up called Greaves. And it's mentioned in this movie, like, you don't think that's just so cheesy looking? No, but apparently they, they put the coins over the eyeballs before they burned them, the dead bodies. But apparently that's not how they did it at all. They would burn the bodies and then put a coin in the mouth after it was burnt. Oh, so they didn't get it historically right. But it, it makes for a good, you know, But now movie. it's funny when you, when you watch it and they just got the coins over the eyes. It's like, <laughs> I don't know. So Kayla, we haven't done... A, a sort of a recasting a fan casting thing in a while that's true in a in a couple of episodes so I thought you know did you want to do that for this one let's go for it okay do you want me to go first what do you think do you want what do you want no I'm ready okay who would you cast for for Achilles for Achilles I would do I think the obvious Chris Hemsworth. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Why not? I, no, that's a good one. And, and I was thinking a little more buzzworthy right now, even a bit younger. Jeremy Allen White is on everyone's mind from the bear. Oh, he's, he's really short though. Ripped. He is, but he's really like ripped and like kind of, I yeah. feel like he could be agile and well, I think I win that round okay, <laughs> next. Oh my gosh. Okay. Let's group together the brothers. So Paris and Hector. Okay. Paris and Hector. Oh, Eric Bana will forever live in my, he has free rent in my mind as Hector and 
He's I think I just him. he's just sitting in a chair in and the back. see. <laughs> that's why I think I don't like him as Henry the Eighth in the other Boleyn girl because I want to think of him as this. Yeah. I don't want to think of him as the horrible Henry the Eighth. We talked about that in our Anne Boleyn episode. Yeah, no, totally. Let's see. I have some. I have some suggestions here. Well, go for it. Okay, it's kind of silly. You're going to laugh. Okay. So thinking back to our Little Women Lori characters, I think Jonah Howard King could be Hector and Timothy Chalamet could be Paris. Oh, Timothy Chalamet. As Paris, because remember, yeah. he's... Yeah, that makes sense. Wait, who's the other one, one you said? Jonah Howard King. Jonah Howard H A U E R Howard King played oh. he played Lori in the mini series with Maya Hawk and he was Eric in the recent Little Mermaid and I just think he's got the sweetest like wholesome face I just and he got really buff apparently for the Little Mermaid to where they had to like make him like lean or like give him some time to not be as buff ooh or we could have Chris Hemsworth and Liam Hemsworth as the brothers Okay, so now you're saying not Achilles. You're saying yeah. Hector and Paris. Okay, that's fine too. Whatever. <laughs> I like the Hemsworth brothers. I still like my my Lori okay. idea. Okay. Because Jonah Howard King just has this like wholesome face. Like he's a he's a honorable guy. Or Helen, Millie Bobby Brown. No. <laughs> Just like, no. no, I do love Millie Bobby Brown. I just feel like she she can do the 80s, but I think, don't you think she looks like she, I don't know. I'm not on board there. I think she's pretty enough. It, wait, did you say, what did you say? Is that what you, you're saying? You don't think she's pretty enough? I mean, as an ethereal beauty, like I just... I think lately she looks more like she knows what a cell phone looks like than ever. And I just don't know if she could do it now. I guess I understand what you, what you're saying. I think they need to go international here. Okay. I'm thinking French actress, Camille Lou. Look her up. If you're going for the same vibes as Diane Kruger, like international blonde, I think she's beautiful and people don't know her. So they would associate her with, Ooh, I've got, I'm going to fly some off here real quick. Rapid fire. Elle Fanning or Lily Reinhardt. Who, who's Lily Reinhardt again? Oh, Kayla. No, Kayla. No. <laughs> you don't like any of these. Because you need okay, to, I like what they. Sophie Turner. I think she's so pretty. She could be a really good Helen. Okay. Yes. I'll give you that. I think she could be Helen. She's got Diane Kruger vibes. But the other two, I think, are just, I'm not going for it. But again, I'm kind of going with the vibes from the 2004, if they were kind of recasting it in the same spirit. Um, okay. Do we have one for Andromache? So Hector's wife, played by Saffron Burroughs in 2004. Her name's Andromache? Yes. That's a strong name. Um. <laughs> uh. Let's see here. And drama key. I think the perfect person would be Katrina Belf. So the Outlander actress Claire from Outlander would be perfect as this character. Or Amber Heard. Kayla, that's a joke. <laughs> Amelia Clark. Yes. Okay. Okay. Now we're talking. She's beautiful, ethereal. I like Amelia Clark. Same as Sophie Turner. I guess Game of Thrones actors would really work well in this setting. Also, anyone that's being cast in like the upcoming Gladiator 2 or the Dune movies like Rebecca Ferguson, Claire. Anne Hathaway. No. You don't like any of mine today. Okay, let's just move on. Because you're picking such like American actresses. <laughs> um, I'm I really like international for this British or European or Carla, you're the casting agent here. Where you want to go international, we'll go international. 
It's your call. <laughs> I love Anne Hathaway. I'm just saying, like, she's Anne Hathaway. Okay. Um, and then Briseis, the cousin. Oh, um, and yeah, to your point, I think Kira Knightley did audition for this. It's right around the time of Elizabeth Swan, so that's interesting. Pirates of the Caribbean. So I think a great Bor- Borsaius would be Florence, Florence Pugh. Yeah. Yeah. I like, like Florence. Yeah. I lo- I, I, I'm someone who thinks Florence can do anything and can do no wrong. And then I know other people who aren't as big of fans, but I, I love Florence. Well, Pugh. there we go. Do you have one? Yeah. Olivia Cook. I think she just gives such Rose Byrne, Briseis vibes. Olivia Cook. Olivia Cook as Briseis. Briseis. Mm-hmm. Okay. I think you cast her in quite a bit of films. So- I did because I really like this actress. I didn't yeah. think she would make a good uh, Anne Boleyn. I think she would do good, yeah. Back to like when they were trying to cast Helen of Troy in this, I think I read Halle Berry was considered, who was also very ethereal and beautiful. And then Catherine Zeta-Jones. Yeah. Sure. It would have been a different look, a different vibe. But I mean, I honestly think Catherine Zeta-Jones is one of the most beautiful women and same with Halle Berry. They're, they're like two yeah. of the most beautiful women ever. So I can see why they were thinking that. But I think they they did pick someone who was who was good and and lesser known yeah thank you all for joining us on this epic adventure back into greek mythology times minus most of the mythology we were really just going with this greek uh, retelling of the story of homer's the iliad troy 2004 and we talked about all the actors we talked about the plot a little bit about the costumes and music, but mostly really just the the, the iconic storyline and the vibes from 2004. But I hope you enjoyed and we'll tune in to our next few episodes. We're, we're getting close to the end of Swoonworthy season two. We would love for you to leave us a review on Spotify and wherever you're listening to podcasts. It will really help support us. And go ahead and share this episode with any of your friends or family who you know love period films or Troy or or hot guys fighting with swords. (laughs) There you go. There you have it. And we're excited to talk period dramas with you next time. Bye.